Good morning. Good morning. Uh, that's good. That's really, really good. Thank you, Wilson. Just a, uh, just a few items I want to discuss with you before Nikki comes and makes the official announcements. This is for the children, children, for the, in the children's choir. You need to be here this afternoon at 4.30, dressed in your clothes that you're going to be singing in. Meet us right up here at 4.30, okay? Now, this is for the adults and everyone that I'm, I'm looking at you now. Tonight at 6 o'clock, your children, our children, the children of this church are going to be putting on their Christmas music. Please, this is not just for parents. It's not just for grandparents. This is a church-wide event. So if you can see me or hear me this morning, you're invited. Please be here tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I'll be hearing it for the first time with you guys. What we heard last week, just a sample. But it's going to be a very, very good music, and you'll be proud of these kids. I'm already proud of them. But uh, please be here and support them, okay? The 20th. The, this choir you see up here will be doing our musical, and I expect the church to be full again. How about that? The expectations, that's what it's all about. It's 6 o'clock on Tuesday. Now then, we need some help immediately after church. Some of you guys that are stronger than myself. We need to clear uh, the, this off this morning after church. And so if some of you just, it won't take a lot. Uh, let's see, Ronnie and Sammy and Mike and Tyler, all these guys, Okay. It won't take long. We just need to move the stuff away, okay? Thank you so much. Listen, let's have a blessed day today. Let's just worship him today. It's all about him anyway. God bless you and have a great day. Miss Nikki, now you're officially invited to do the announcement. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's officially say good morning. <laughs> great job. I had a warm-up session, I guess. All righty, welcome to Williams. Welcome, all of you. Um, let's just warm up our faces and give someone a smile, okay? Smile to someone. All righty. Now, if you are a visitor, welcome again. And you are a special person today because you get to fill out a flappy sheet of paper in the back of your bulletin. It flaps, and it also rips out. And it also folds, and it also goes in the offering plate. So just to have a record of your visit. Now, before I do my yapping, I have a very important person who has an announcement to make. So, Whit, would you please come on up? Good morning. Uh, I have the privilege of serving on the Salvation Army Advisory Board. And as most of you know, um, it's a lot of... Um, of people that are in need right now and as you know the bells are starting to be rung at certain locations um, I have volunteered a day of Tuesday December 15th um, that I'm responsible for helping fill those locations um, many of you know uh, Walmart here in Jacksonville Winn-Dixie and this year they're actually doing the ABC store uh, in Jacksonville so <laughs> So if you see anybody there at church, you really can get them, get a donation out of that one. So, <laughs> so uh, they've actually gotten good response out of that one, I'm sure. So, <laughs> but uh, like I said, Tuesday, December 15th, I'll have a sign-up sheet next Sunday, um, and there's several locations. If you can give an hour of your time, two hours, however much you feel like you can give, I know it's, uh, the, the hours are from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., which is obviously, you know, during working hours, but maybe after work or something. Um, I'm volunteering to kind of run that day, so if y'all could help me out, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, just, just a little bit of your time. And also, they have, um, they are currently leasing a new building. I say a new building. It's the old Hancock building there in Linlock for their thrift store. Um, so if y'all have any clothes or stuff that you would like to donate to, uh, you know, I know there's several organizations, but, um, uh, you know, that old Hancock building right there in Linlock is, is their, new, um, their new thrift store. Uh, and also don't forget about the Angel Tree at the Quintard Mall if you all want to sponsor a child, something like that. But uh, Tuesday, December 15th, and I'll get a sign-up sheet next Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Now, if you read over your bulletin, you would know that there's a church council meeting at 4 o'clock. And um, there is an insert for a night in Bethlehem. 
which is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday from 6 to 8. So, I'm in need of a Christmas miracle, so you're all going to help, okay? We're going to meet at 3 o'clock if you would like to help be a part and plan this out. We need to get everything together, get our ducks in a row. Um, but if you don't want to meet, if you would like to stay at home and make some cookies for this weekend, that would be great. Or go out and buy some hot chocolate. That would be great, too. We need this for refreshments for our guests both nights. So that's double the cookies and hot chocolate. Now, last year, I know a lot of you donated for the weekend your trees, fake trees, ficus trees, palm trees, whatever, um, and your pottery, your rugs, and your baskets. Could you do that again, please? Please help the miracle out, okay? Um, please deliver that to the church this week. And I have a lot of young, healthy youth that could help me go get it if you are unable to send it to the church. And make sure your name is put on it so we can return it back. But we are in need of all of that for this weekend to happen and to be awesome, okay? So... Cookies, hot chocolate, pottery, rugs, and baskets and trees. Okay? So, y'all have been sitting too long. And I know you've seen someone you want to hug this morning. You had to have seen someone. Get up and go find that person and hug them really tight. Go. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iterius and Trachonitis, and Lysanaris, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caprius, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough weights made smooth, and all the flat flesh shall see the salvation of God. is not new to me, but it may be new to some of you. And as I, at work, I go over this time because most of you know my job is in a labor and delivery unit, so everybody thinks I have a wonderful job. But it wasn't until Friday when I was, had a little Hispanic girl that uh, speaks no English and I speak no Espanol. So we had a hard time communicating as we usually do. But when she held that baby for the first time and I saw the look in her eye, it was the same look I had for mine. It was the same look I've had when Mike and Mary had theirs and I saw that look or um, when Holly or Jesse Kate or any of these that I've been there when you've had your children. It was, you know that look. And when I, she held that baby Friday, I thought, that's what Mary looked like when she held her baby boy.
with no place to rest inside. Soon she would bring forth a son. The end was full, so instead, he was born in a stable bed. And there his life had just begun. How was she supposed to know as she wrapped him in swaddling clothes that her perfect newborn baby boy would become a sacrifice? He would run and he would laugh and play, but his manhood would bring the day when for the world he would choose to die. Mary wrapped a present to the world on that first Christmas morn when her baby was born. Mary wrapped a present to the world Just one bright star for all to see The way to Bethlehem that winter's night Many gifts they brought to him But a greater gift she gave to them For through her son would come eternal life Mary wrapped up presents to Last time we'll be hearing that song, I guarantee you that. Thank you, Diane. Thank you so much. Well, the scriptures tell us to go tell it on the mountain. The song says go tell it on the mountain. So let's sing about it. 138. 138. Let's go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Stand with us, please. Stand. Everyone sing. All three stanzas.
Isaiah 53, 4 says, Surely the Lord has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Around the room, those living with AIDS shared their faith stories. Some had their faith renewed after years of believing God had condemned them. Others were just beginning their walk with Christ and shared the power of God's love and mercy. This group, led by CBF field personnel Ronnie Adams, gathers weekly at an AIDS service center in Greenwich Village, New York City. Pray for these dear souls who want to know God. Tori Wentz, another CBL field personnel and a registered hospice nurse, works in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, with individuals dying with cancer and AIDS. Pray that her patients would experience God's love and relief from suffering. Pray that God would grant wisdom to Tori and her colleagues as they seek to serve many more in need. Pray with me, please. God, during this season of Christmas and Advent, we look for you and we experience the way that you entered the world at your birth, but we ask for you to enter our hearts again and remind us of the wonderful things that you do among us and in us. We pray for these two who work so sacrificially and give so much of themselves to those who are suffering in a great way. Help us to minister to those around us and to provide our prayer and financial support to those who serve as field personnel. We pray that you um, be with us near during this Christmas season and help us to experience you so that your love and grace can be shared throughout the year. In your name I pray. Amen. People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Isaiah 9 2. This is the second Sunday of Advent. Today we light the angel's candle that represents peace. Scripture tells us of the angels who sang about God's peace offered to all people through Jesus Christ. This is the peace that surpasseth all understanding and guards our hearts and minds. Imagine hearing the angels sing. What would it have been like to hear their song of good news? We can still know the peace of God in our hearts. This year, let us listen for the ways God might want to sing peace into our lives. And may we try to be peacemakers in our world today. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good job. First try. Well, are y'all excited about tonight? Yes. Yeah. I'm excited too. I can't wait. Okay. Well, I know you're all excited because Christmas is here. The season's here. And on Christmas morning, we all wake up to these beautifully wrapped presents. Kind of like this one. Ugh. And with pretty bows on the top of greens and reds and silvers and golds. But what if there was a present underneath your tree and it was wrapped pretty plainly? Kind of like this one. Just, you know, brown paper. But it had your name on it. Which one would you open first? That one. Yes. <laughs> Good answer. Yes. We would open up this one first, that's wouldn't we? It is bigger. Yes. It's more attractive. Well, you know, that's um, a reason why a lot of people miss out on the gift that God has given us. God has given us a gift, and it's not a beautifully wrapped gift like this one. Um, it's the gift of his son. Now, let me tell you, Jesus came into this world in a humbling way. His mother, Mary, was very young. She was about 13, 14 years old when she had Jesus. That's like having a baby in the 7th or 8th grade. 
And then Mary's husband, Joseph, he was really poor. He didn't have a lot of money. He was a carpenter, and that's the way he made his money. And Jesus, of all places to be born, was born in a stable, kind of like a barn with a bunch of stinky animals around. So that's not a beautifully wrapped present, is it? But let me tell you, it's the best darn gift you'll ever have. I'm telling you the truth. It's the best gift ever. And a lot of people are too busy unwrapping gifts like this that the world has to offer that are beautifully wrapped that they miss out on the best gift ever. The gift of eternal life. That once we die and leave this earth, we continue to live in heaven with God. That's cool. So just remember that this world has some pretty cool-looking presents. They're exciting-looking, but once you open them, they're, eh, they're kind of like, uh, well, oh well. But to open up the gift that God has given you, the gift of Jesus, it's amazing. It's wow. It's all I can think of. Wow. Y'all remember that this Christmas, okay? Thank you for coming down this morning. Don't you chill and need to go with your leader? Be choir practice. Get ready for the night. Man, isn't that a great looking sight? All those beautiful children. My goodness. The offertory hymn for the morning is 297. I love to tell the story. 297, we're going to stand and sing all three stanzas. All three stanzas. Join us, please, as we sing. 297.
Very glad that you're here today. This is a special Sunday for us every year when we invite uh, a missionary, a representative from the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, the CBF, to come and share with us about the mission and the work that we all uh, are part of, our, our uh, support of CBF. And we have a great partnership with them, and we're going to hear for a few moments from our speaker. He'll uh, bring our message and talk to us a little bit about missions. Uh, we know that during this uh, time of year, uh, it is very important for us to think about missions all the time, but in Christmas, we think about missions in a very special ways. We think about the mission of God sending His Son to us, and uh, mostly during Christmas, we are very generous enough and to give to the Christmas offering for missions, and I hope that we'll continue that tradition here at our church. Uh, a lot of the uh, support that missionaries receive throughout the year uh, comes uh, maybe about half of it comes traditionally from this season of the year, so I hope that we'll do that. We're doing a lot of stuff locally, and I challenge you to give to both of those two things because they're both necessary and important, and I know that you'll do that. We'll hear from our speaker in a few moments. I do want to recognize a couple of folks, though, before uh, I introduce our speaker. First, Laura, it's good to see you back. Don, glad you're doing well after her surgery. Glad y'all are back and uh, here in church. We missed y'all, and good to see you here. Look, you're doing great. Uh, also, uh, Tiffany and Kyle Jennings are here today. Kyle's on leave from the military, and we're glad to see you, Kyle. You doing well? Good. But he's learned. He's, he's learned well. <laughs> That's good. He said he was hiding from me a while ago, but you know that never worked when you were here, did it? <laughs> okay. We hope you are doing well, and, and God speed to you as you continue your mission and your work. Okay, and we continue to pray for you. Okay, you'll be leading for Germany soon, I think, right? Next week. Okay. Okay, you've already been away. Okay, great. All right. Well, we keep you in our prayers, man. All right, Terry Hamrick is our speaker today. He is a coordinator for leadership development for the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. Uh, been in local church ministry for a long time. And the same year I came to Williams, he came to be the coordinator for that uh, service of CBF. And I'll let, I know he'll tell you more about that. I don't want to take a lot of his time. But he did a great job for us and really challenged us to think about the way we can be a missional church during the Sunday school hour. I know he'll do a good job leading us today. So, Terry, thank you for being here and your wife, Judy. We appreciate you coming and being a part of our worship today. God bless you. And welcome to Williams. If you have a Bible, I'd like to invite you to turn to the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. 19th verse. John 20, 19 and following. Hear the words of the evangelist. It was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, then his disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
it's a joy to be with you this morning. It's always a delight to be with people who are enthusiastic about their faith, people who care, and people who obviously care about one another. You're a fortunate people in many ways. You're fortunate to have Mike Oliver as your pastor. He didn't pay me to say this, yet. He's also smarter than I thought, strategic, because I put it together. I realized that he was planning ahead, and if a certain football team had done poorly last night, he wouldn't have been able to give you anything. <laughs> and if they won, you couldn't stand him. He would just go on forever. So he was real strategic in planning this. So I'm, I'm uh, all kidding aside, uh, I'm delighted to be here. I, I want to say from the very beginning, thank you for the partnership that you have taken seriously with Baptists around the world and part of that partnership with the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. I had a delightful time in Sunday school this morning. I had a good time, and I hope some of you did. But uh, I want to share with you a little more in depth at this hour. We read the John 20 passage. Jesus said to his disciples to go and do what he had done. I've done it. It's your turn. God's mission is best understood in the person of Jesus Christ. You and I have been and are being called. You know Matthew 28, 19, and 20. We have been given the Great Commission. We have been commissioned and called and said, go. You and I have been gifted. In the Sunday school hour, I read the first 16 verses of the fourth chapter of Ephesians. I won't take time to do that now. But in that chapter, Paul is saying, you have been gifted. You have been called and you have been given gifts to fulfill that call. 1 Peter 4.10, like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gifts each of you have received. We have a variety of gifts. I've seen those already today. Several of you have the gift of hospitality. And I enjoy that very much. Some have I have seen the disaster relief trailer, and some of you are involved in disaster relief in response. Those are gifts. There are a variety of gifts. If I were around here a little longer, I would find always, obviously more and more. But you and I have been called, and we've been gifted. This is not new. This is not change. God calls us. God gifts us. The world you and I find ourselves is new. It is a different world. This world calls you and me to personal accountability. God's calling the church is no longer adequate. God's call is being issued to you and to me. We are being challenged to a new understanding of what it means to be the people of God in the world. Unfortunately, and I haven't been uh, with you that long, so I can't talk about you directly, but I will soon. Uh, I'm in a lot of churches. And unfortunately, too many Christians have succumbed to what I call the triple S disease. You know about that? Sit, soak, and sour. We just can't be stuck there. The needs are too great. The calling is too compelling for us just to sit in church, soak up all the good things, and then... If you're not active, if you don't move around, it inevitably happens. Things start to go sour. We start thinking about ourselves, and we start thinking about, name it. Just name the, the trivia that churches get fixed on rather than focusing on the commission in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here's a question for the morning. How am I going to respond to God's call? How are you going to respond to God's call? The world calls for a holistic response. We must care about persons, not just about statistics. We are being called. We are being gifted. 
Hear the great commandment, Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, that's not the first time you've heard that. I'm here to ask you this morning to focus with me on the ends of the earth part of this. Mike has already said, and uh, it's obvious you care deeply about your uh, community and the area here, your, your Jerusalem and your Judea. And that is crucial. I am not holding up one against the other. What I'm saying to you is this commandment is for all. It's for our local concerns and our global concerns. And my task this morning is to talk to you a little bit about the global perspective, the global picture. In Sunday school, I talked a lot about, e even there, the, the idea of how you can be involved locally and, and globally. We have an urgent task, you and I. 300 million more people around the world are living in poverty now than when the global recession began. 300 million more people are now living in poverty than, than were 18 months ago. That's a challenge. That's a, that creates all kind of issues. Our call to reach them with the gospel and the love of Christ is more urgent than ever. We are in a time when congregations are engaging in global missions in new and meaningful ways, and we celebrate this. Partnering with other churches to have, to have concern about certain focus. At the same time, our field personnel are essential to engagement of churches in these global mission enterprises. Hundreds of churches connect with our field personnel and have worked for years in long-term cross-cultural incarnational ministry. Without the presence of these persons on the field, your congregation's connection to God's mission would be incomplete. You would not reach the ends of the earth. I'll tell you a few stories. We have, I'm fortunate to be in the Atlanta office and every so often field personnel cycle through as they're coming in for a home field assignment or they're reassigning and they come in for debriefing and discussion. And I hear some stories. Let me share a few brief stories with you. Phil and Diane told of helping undocumented workers on the back side of a horse racing track. These people were lonely, poor, hardworking, and living far away from their families and friends. Christy, a young woman, told of helping very poor young people in a community uh, have a vision for becoming better people by making good choices in life. She encouraged the teenagers to go to school, to study hard, avoid repaying hurts and slights with retaliation and to trust Jesus as their Savior. This worker comforted teenagers the week before she left the field who were traumatized by a drive-by shooting just a block and a half from their house. Todd talked about losing a close believer friend who was gunned down after stepping out of his office near two mosques in the capital city. He shared how this sudden loss had impacted his whole, his family, his friends, yet firmed up his determination to continue to live and work in that city. This family, they did homeschooling together, uh, and they were close family, and he was shot and killed. Brenda told of working with local believers to run a center which children suffering from cerebral palsy have a place uh, uh, where people care about them. And in this culture, they had no concept of providing treatment for children who suffer from physical and mental handicap. Bob and Janice spoke about working among immigrants who had left their home country to find work and a better life for their children. And they provide a place for immigrants to practice the native language, display their artwork, and meet in safe places to celebrate their faith. John and Casey shared having just spent three years helping provide clean water for desperately poor people in a region known to be resistant to Christianity. To be resistant to Christianity is putting it mildly. It was shocking to learn how deadly the water was in that region, this region of the world, and it was 
but it was the only source for cooking and drinking water they had. You hear the variety of ways that your field personnel are being the presence of Christ around the world, reaching the ends of the earth. One other I'll, I'll mention, Ronnie Adams' name was mentioned in the missions moment a minute ago. Ronnie is a CBF missionary in the Hell's Kitchen area of New York City. Not a place you really want to live. He ministers to uh, a variety of people, including a number of uh, AIDS patients and HIV positive people. But Ronnie came down to Anderson, South Carolina. You think, well, if you come from New York to Anderson, he, that's quite a switch. He comes to Anderson to Boulevard Baptist Church, my wife's home church, and, and worked with them in summer camp. He was a resident missionary for their summer camp for their kids and for the, for the community kids. And as Ronnie tells, he befriends a little girl who came each day. After four days, she whispered in Ronnie's ear and asked him, Ronnie, do you have your own pillow? Ronnie replied, yes, I do, sweetheart. Do you not have your own pillow? She whispered and replied, no, I share one with my two brothers. This is South Carolina. This is not, this is not a remote part of the world. This is our country. I want to invite you to continue to partner with CBF and express your calling to God's mission. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. It's, the PR people might want us to put out a rosy picture and say how great things are, but at current levels of giving, our offering for global missions, we have to cut, we're going to have to cut field personnel and operating expense, causing their ministries to be severely hurt. We're having to make hard choices and restricting their ability to minister among the most neglected. We need at least $500,000 in increased giving to the offering for global missions just to simply restore the cuts we've made recently to our bottom line, to our, to our current personnel. doesn't include adding new people that we need. Yes, the offering for global missions to CBF has been a victim of the economic crisis just like everything else. The offering for global missions has been static for quite some time. We've seen little increase, while at the same time, Inflation has eaten up the value of some of those do static dollars. I visit with field personnel, and they talk about, uh, not for themselves, but they talk about their concern about ministering to the people that they were called to minister to. We currently have 135 field personnel serving around the world. We could have many more if we, had, if we could afford that. We have many people coming and applying and hearing and responding to God's call to mission and to missions. And we need to be able to tell them yes. We are in the global missions enterprise together. We have the structure to facilitate the engagement of congregations in strategic ways around the world. I talked about that in Sunday school. But we need your assistance to put field personnel in those places where churches cannot go. We can't send volunteers to lots of the places where our field personnel are. Uh, it would not be wise, and you would not be effective. We're going to the ends of the earth. We must put field personnel in the hard places so that all people can hear the gospel. As I said earlier, you are a fortunate and blessed people. Amen? Amen? All right. You are. I am. We all are. We have been called. We have been commissioned. We have been gifted. And I'm just here to remind you of that. I'm here to say, and you heard earlier, I didn't even tell you where those people, missionaries, were from. Because often we get fixated on locations, on these exotic places. The needs are everywhere. The ends of the earth start from here and go in both directions and meet back. It is a global concern that we have. My challenge to you, my, my, I come to remind you of your, your calling and your commissioning, remind you of your being gifted, and I'm here just to share with you the reality of what the situation is. 
I could sugarcoat it, but no one would be benefited by that. We need your help. Remember, again, Jesus' words in John 20. As the Father has sent me, what? So I send you. Or as the King James said, so send I you. As the Father has sent me, just as God sent Jesus, Jesus says, I am sending you. And you can say that and put your name. God is sending, and you can say your name. That's what we as Baptists believe. That's what we as Christians believe. We are responsible, you and I, to share the good news around the world. Bringing God's message to God's world requires our best. I stand before you this morning speaking for those voices you cannot hear. Persons in the hard places that need to hear the gospel and to see the gospel lived out in their midst. You have done great things in partnering with us. You do great things in your local community and in your local uh, work. And I come to thank you and to tell you how grateful I am for that. But I come trying to paint a realistic picture of the tremendous difficulty that many people are under. People have never needed to hear the good news of Jesus more than they need to hear it right now. You and I are being called to join in that mission, God's mission. I want to thank you for letting me be here and be with you this morning and to enjoy the fellowship here and enjoy the getting to know you and getting acquainted with this fine church. As we conclude, I want to invite you to think about your decision that you need to make today. Now, I'm, I'm this outsider. Who am I coming here trying to tell you what to do? I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm, trying to, I'm offering you an invitation. As you think about your Christmas celebration, as you think about how you honor the gift of the baby Jesus that we see displayed so beautifully here, one of my concerns is at Christmas we, we have domesticated Jesus and kept Jesus as a cute little baby in a manger. That's safe and cute. But we know the rest of the story. We know that Jesus calls us to be his presence in the world. I'm asking for you to help us be the presence of Christ in those hard places with the most neglected people in the world, in the hardest places where the gospel is so desperately needed. I ask and invite you this morning to think about how you can participate in your global missions offering, in your commitment to sharing with people in this community, in you rolling up your sleeves and saying yes to God's call, to being a bell ringer for the Salvation Army, for caring about people who need to hear the good news and to see someone whose words and actions match up. I need to see that, don't you? I hope that our brief time together, that you're hearing, and I'm asking you to make a response wherever you sit, there may be some that need to, are looking for a church home. Boy, this is be a good one. You can drive all the way to Oxford to come here, right? I mean, this is a good, a, a great church. I'm envious. I'm standing in, in the pulpit and I'm saying it. I'm admitting I'm envious of the fellowship I see among you, the care I see here. And if you're not a part of that group, you ought to run down this aisle. To be, a part of this, to be a part of this fellowship. God may be speaking to you in a number of ways. And the pastor will be here to, to hear your response. My invitation is for you to remember the gifts that you've been given. Remember the gifts you've been given. Remember the response, the, the, the command and the commission you've been given. And I hope that during this Advent season, you will find ways to be the presence of Christ I hope you'll determine right now where you're sitting. I'm going to find ways to be the presence of Christ in this Advent season. Join me in prayer.
Lord, help us not to be your comfortable people. We have it all figured out, have it all together, and just enjoying the good life. Help us not to be complacent people. Help us not to be just happy with the way things are and trying not to rock the boat. Help us to understand and hear with both ears that you are calling us to your mission. You have called us and you patiently continue to call us. You have given us gifts and abilities. You've given us this community to support us and encourage us. Now, it's up to us. How are we going to respond to the phenomenal needs in the world, to your calling, and our place in it? It's my prayer that each one of us will recommit ourselves to that call and find tangible ways to express it in this most holy of seasons. In the name of Christ, we now stand to sing. Amen. 470. Four seconds. Please. Some of the guys, if you wish, hang, hang around a few moments, help us. Let's sing a little chorus. He got the whole world.
Have a great day. See you tonight.